Hi there, welcome back to Advances in Corixid Science. We're at Chip Lake Park today, um, the place where Jesse and I got recordings of uh, Cena Corixa dacatensa stridulating under the ice, under thick ice, uh, in March, in uh, kind of the end of the ice season. So I really wanted to get another clean recording of that sound just to confirm that, uh, you know, that it happens in a predictable fashion. But we had a kind of a kind of a bust today. Now, there is a lot of ice out there. There's uh, uh, about 90 centimeters of ice. And we went out onto the lake, I'm guessing 50 meters. It felt like kind of a, a chip shot in golf, a fairly short chip shot in golf. Why, you know, do I golf very much? No. But somehow that's how I learned to judge distance. So that's what it felt like. We did not hear any uh, stridulations on the uh, on the hydrophone. We didn't see anything when we scooped up the uh, water. So we went out further, maybe 125 or, or further meters offshore. At the second hole, there were old ice fishing holes. And around those holes, there were the bodies of frozen... Um, Scuds, Gamorous, and Corixids. They look like Cena Corixa. I'm not sure. I have to get them back home. Get them under the microscope. I do have uh, uh, some samples, so that's cool. And um, and so we, we drilled a hole there. More Corixids and Scuds came up. The Scuds were still twitching, but the Corixids were dead. Dead, dead, dead. Uh, put the hydrophone down. Listened for 10 minutes. Didn't hear a peep. And then, uh, then put the camera down, and it was that was a tragic sight. A tragic sight. All these, all these dead critters up uh, up underneath the ice in very greenish water. So uh, the whole place must have gone anoxic. That's my guess. Tragic. So still don't have that uh, that nice, clean, winter Corixid sound recording that I so desperately would love to have. But eventually we'll get it, and we learn something new about uh, just how tough it is to be a Corixid in winter in a shallow Alberta lake like this one. Hmm. Look at that place. Chip Lake. And, I don't know, speaking of advances in Corixid science, I know some of you are probably curious what's happening with the Gull Lake Shallows Aquarium, or maybe you're not, but um, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, amazingly enough, now it is now uh, early March, and this aquarium was set up last summer, I think in June, at Gull Lake, with just some, some critters from the, uh, from the shallows of the lake here in Alberta. And I think I still have every species that I've noticed in the tank. They're, they're all still there, which is amazing. But of course, you know, the fortunes of the different species uh, rise and fall. And right now we have far fewer of the scuds, the uh, hyalella. There's still some and they seem to be doing all right. But, you know, maybe we're between generations. Maybe they've just, um, you know, run their course, who knows. Uh, there are a lot of Corixids, water boatmen. In particular, um, Coracella tarsalis. They seem to have laid eggs and produced a new generation and they're just doing great. I'm feeding them on uh, frozen bloodworms. In other words, frozen coronamid larvae. Now, I did see some, some uh, coronamid larvae in the tank um, and the reason I saw them was that the Corixids were grabbing them and pulling them out of the sand. So uh, so there were some wild coronamids in there. Uh, they may not be there because there are so many coronamid eating Corixids now. What else? Daphnia, the Daphnia shudleri are still doing marvelously. There are plenty of ostracods, although not quite as many as there were at the peak. Um, I'm still seeing the little uh, copepods, the, um, 
the cyclopoid copepods, which I quite mistakenly uh, called dioptimus in the last video, so I'm still feeling bad about that. And what else? Yeah, that's that's kind of the main players. And the, the sago pond weed is doing fine. It's got a little bit of hair algae on it, but it always does. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just still enjoying the dynamics of this five-gallon system, ecosystem, I guess you could call it, although... I hate to use the term that loosely. It just seems kind of glib to me. But anyway, five-gallon thing with lots and lots of, uh, of action, and I'm enjoying it. So that's it for now. Advances in corrected science. What's happening next? I don't know. I'm going to go out tomorrow and try once again to get a, a sound recording of corrected stridulating under the ice. Maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. These guys... There are so many stridulating corrixids in the tank right now that uh, I can actually hear them from uh, across the room over there where I sit in my lazy boy when I'm working on my laptop. And that is quite a distance. That's, you know, that's like the distance between the glass bowl or jar or whatever it was way back in the 1800s and Mrs. Ball heard the corrections chirping and said to her husband, Mr. Ball, I think those are your bugs making that sound. And he published it, and that was the first account of corrected sounds ever. So, there you go. And I think, oh yeah, my phone's buzzing too. Can you hear that? I don't know. I'm just going to ignore it, because I'm making a video. Talk to you later. Oh, you know what? I, I screwed up that last bit. It, it wasn't Mrs. Ball. It was Miss Ball. So I, I don't know what relationship she had to Mr. Ball, the author of that 1846 account. And, and apparently Miss Ball heard the corrected through a closed door. So that's even more impressive. Impressive, you know, better than me hearing it uh, across the living room. Yep. Anyway, finishing up. This is Yo Wo Cha Ass at Fallis at Wobman Lake, Alberta, Canada. Just did another sound recording in a shallow bit of the lake and nothing. Really hard to replicate what happened last year at Chip Lake Park.